Now, it's New Year's, and uh, it's family service, so we're going to try something a little different today. Have you ever heard of a Mad Lib? Have you ever heard of one of these? It's basically a little story that's all laid out with a bunch of blanks, um, and you randomly fill in the blanks and then see what the story ends up telling. And so here's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to try this out and see if it works. Um, I'm going to ask you uh, for different words. So I'm going to need nouns and adjectives and adverbs and verbs, and I'll define those in just a second. But um, you're going to randomly give me these words. We're going to plug them into this story here, and then uh, we will tell the story and see how random and funny it is. The last two services, this has been hilarious. So let's see how this goes. So first off, let me define uh, what we need. A noun is a person, place, or thing. If it's been years since you've been in, in an English class, a noun is a person, place, or thing. A verb is any kind of action. So jump, run, things like that. Now here's where it gets hard. An adjective is a word that describes or modifies a noun. Okay, so let me give you an example. A color is an adjective. If I wanna describe a cow, if I say uh, the brown cow, the word brown is the adjective because it's describing cow. Okay, you with me so far? You didn't know you were going to get an English lesson in church today. Yay! Okay, so this is the hard one, an adverb. An adverb for this game, here's how we're going to define it. An adverb is a word that describes or modifies another verb. Now, Adverbs are usually, or commonly, are the words that end in L-Y, okay? So, dramatically is a adverb, okay, is an adverb. You with me so far? Okay, so we have 18 words that I'm going to get from you guys. I'm going to fill these in. Our tech team back in the back is going to plug them into this so that we can show them on the screen, and then we'll tell the story. Are you ready? Got it. Okay, here we go. Um, I need a verb, Run. Okay, so number one is run. Run. Number two, I need another verb. Just yell it out. Jog. Number two is jog. Number three is a verb ending in ing. Sleeping. We all like sleeping. Okay, so number three is sleeping. Number four is another verb ending in ing. Over here. Praying. Okay, number four is praying. Number five is a number. Over here, give me a number. 38. So number five is 38. Okay, number six, I need a plural noun, so more than one. Horses. Okay, number six is horses. Number seven, I need a verb, an action. Laughing. Okay, number seven is laughing. Number eight, I need a noun. What did you say over here? Zoo? Number eight is zoo. Okay, number nine, I need another verb, an action. Sneezing, that will work great. Number nine is sneezing. So eight was zoo, nine is sneezing. Number 10, I need a noun. Over here, somebody give me a noun, a person, place, or thing. Motorcycle. motorcycle. Number 10 is motorcycle. Man, I hope I can read my writing at the end of this. Okay, so number 10 is motorcycle. Number 11, I need another number. 43. So number 11 is 43. Number 12, I need a place, a location. Alaska, okay. Number 12 is Alaska. Number 13, I need a person. Chad. Number 13 is Chad. And number 14, I need another person. Jack Black, okay. Number 14 is Jack Black. If you don't know who Jack Black is, he's a comedian. Okay, number 15, I need an adjective, a word that describes a noun. Say it again. Harry. Harry. That's perfect. <laughs> number 15 is Harry. All right. Number 16, I need another adjective. Balding. Balding. Balding? Okay. That will work. 
So number 16 is bald. Okay, so number 17, got two more. Number 17, I need another adjective. Smelly, perfect. Number 17 is smelly. And then lastly, last one, number 18, I need an adverb. Uh, It ends in L-Y. Disgustingly. Disgustingly. (laughs) Number 18 is disgustingly. That's a long word. Okay, so I'm going to give the tech team a couple minutes to get these words finished, put in our story. But this is going to be a completely random uh, series of New Year's uh, layouts. So tech team, are we ready? Yes, no? We're good. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Here's our story. I am looking forward to New Year because I can run and jog. That doesn't sound like a good New Year. Okay, so I resolved to improve my health by sleeping and praying. Okay, I can see that. Every day. I will eat 38 fruits and horses daily. (laughs) I will be laughing to my zoo. Okay, I will sneeze my motorcycle 43 times a day. How do you sneeze a motorcycle? Whew. Okay, I'm looking forward to a vacation to Alaska with Chad and Jack Black, who are my hairy friends. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> think it's better. It will be so bald. <laughs> I promise to be smelly, so I can live disgustingly for this coming year. That's awesome. So guys, if you're looking for a New Year's resolution, I just gave you one. You're welcome. So it's New Year's. Happy New Year. Uh, Tomorrow's New Year's Day. We're glad that you're here with us. I want you to take your Bibles or your apps, whatever you read on, and turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. If you don't have a Bible with you, uh, there are Bibles under some of the chairs. Grab one of those and turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke is about two-thirds of the way through the Bible. Um, it, you'll, you'll hit a series of four names, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, that's the book you're looking for. If you get into uh, the Ians is what I call them, the I-A-Ns, you've gone too far. Uh, so 1 Corinthians and Philippians and Ephesians, you've gone too far if you get there. If you're in some really weird sounding names, uh, like Malachi uh, or something like that, then you're not far enough. So Luke chapter 10. If I totally just confused you, go to the table of contents. That's why God gave us one. So, all right, so it's a new year, and a new year means resolutions, doesn't it? We make these New Year's resolutions. We decide to do something different with our lives. Um, and, and let's be honest, a new year gives us the, oppor- uh, the opportunity to kind of start with a clean slate, doesn't it? It's the start of a new year. I'm going to do something better with this year than I did with the last, right? And we all want to be healthier or smarter or more spiritual, whatever. We, we all make these resolutions. But how do you stick with a resolution? That's one of the big questions we have. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I told you we were going to have a lot of different things here today. We're going to do something different. Um, Where you're at, turn to either your family or your neighbor, or if you just want to sit by yourself and not talk to anyone, just think about this question. But turn to your little group that you're with, and I want you to answer this. What are some New Year's resolutions that you think you should try? Go. Discuss. What New Year's resolutions do you think you should try this year? Okay, so how many of you in the room, show of hands, how many of you already had a resolution in mind? You've already thought this out. Okay, not quite half the group. So you've already thought out this resolution, but here's the challenge. How do we stick with it? Because studies show that the average person sticks with a New Year's resolution for three weeks. Three weeks. You realize there's 52 weeks in a year, right? 
So the average person sticks with a New Year's resolution for three weeks. So how do we take that three weeks number and turn it into the full 52 weeks? Um, so I'm going to give you some pointers. This is not really the part of the message that's important, but it may help you. So here we go. Three points, three recommendations to help you stick with a New Year's resolution this year. The first one is this. Start with something small, okay? So let me give you an example. We're in church. By the way, you know you're in church right now? Um, so let's say you decide you want to have a closer relationship with Christ. And you decide you're going to do that by reading your Bible more. Now, if you've never been a big Bible reader, if you don't really pick up your Bible during the week and you haven't really read it uh, daily, that's something you've never done, then reading the Bible from cover to cover is probably not a realistic resolution for you because that's a big commitment. That's a big change to the way you run your life. So rather than saying, I've never read the Bible, I'm going to read the whole Bible in one year, why not say, I will commit to read 15 minutes four times a week. Isn't that much more of a reasonable and achievable goal than saying, I'm going to commit to read five chapters every day of the week and I won't skip one day the entire year? Because that's what reading the Bible in a year kind of looks like. It's three to five chapters every single day of the year. So you could say, I'm going to read 15 minutes per day for four days a week. And you do really good at that through the month of January. You come to February and say, okay, I nailed it in January. Now I'm going to do 15 minutes five times a week rather than just four. And then in March, you did really good in February. In March, you come to March and you say, you know what? I'm going to up that to 20 minutes a day, five days a week. You see where I'm going with this? You are not looking at achieving this very massive goal of many, many chapters every single day and you can't skip a day. You're saying, I'm going to commit a time frame which is much more achievable. It's easier to wrap our minds around 15 minutes than it is around five chapters, right? So uh, start with something small and then build up from there. The second pointer is this. Don't get discouraged when you're not perfect at it. Let's face it. Most of the time, when we fall short of hitting our New Year's resolutions, it's because we got tempted or we got lazy and we got disappointed when we fell short, right? So we just give up. So instead of getting discouraged, just stick with it. Start over. Begin anew and keep going with it because something is better than just giving up and doing nothing, right? So, and the third one is get someone to hold you to it. And this is great because every study out there shows that if you tell somebody that you're going to do something, you're way more likely to actually do it. So you can go to somebody and say, hey, I want to read my Bible 15 minutes a day, four days a week. Will you text me or call me or every time you see me, will you just bring that up and make sure and check on me and make sure I'm doing it? Or even better, you could go to that person and say, hey, I want to read 15 minutes a day, four days a week. Will you do that with me? See what you've done there? Now you've made a resolution to increase your closeness to Christ, and you're bringing someone along with you. You're not doing it by yourself. You and someone else are doing it together, and you can encourage one another and build each other up as you walk through that. And guys, that doesn't just apply to reading your Bible. It applies to anything that you want to do. It's always better to go to the gym if you've got someone to hold you to it and go with you, right? So think about things like that. Keep it small and build up from there. Don't get discouraged, and then get someone to hold you to it or do it with you. So just some little pointers to have, but let's be honest, that's not what this message is about. This message is about resolutions, but very specifically, it's about what Jesus's resolution would be for our lives. That's what I want to focus on this morning. So if you were to go to Jesus and Jesus was to audibly speak into your ear, you could hear him speaking, and he, you asked him, what should be my 2018 resolution? What do you think he would say? Well, I don't think we need to hear from him audibly because I think he gives us the answer in his Bible. And here's what I think he would tell us uh, if we asked him that question very specifically. His answer would be this. 
love everyone, everywhere, every time. It's very simple, kind of. Love everyone, everywhere, every time. And, and this is the resolution that I think Jesus would have for us because I think in the big picture, loving others and loving God are the two things that matter the most. And, and we're going to look at a passage that tells us this. It's a resolution to make the world a better place by following Christ's example more closely. And so that's the commitment that I think Jesus would have for us. And really, this resolution is not about us. It's about others, isn't it? It's about how we treat others. So take your Bibles, Luke chapter 10. We're going to start in verse 25. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Now, as you're turning there, I've got another question that I want you to discuss with the people around you. And here's the question. So turn to your people. Why is it important for Christians to show love to other people? Go. Why is it important? That's a tougher question, isn't it? It's easy to ask, what New Year's resolution should I do? I don't know, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to go to the gym once a week. Yeah, that's a little easier. But when we get into the deeper discussion, we know that Christ calls us to love others, right? But why is it so important? Well, we're going to look at that. Luke chapter 10, verse 25. Look down with me. It says, And behold, a lawyer stood up and put him, Jesus, to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to in inherit eternal life? In other words, what should I do to go to heaven? And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And the lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, the lawyer, desired to justify himself and said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Okay, stop there. Kids, have you ever heard this story, the parable of the Good Samaritan? Have you ever heard that parable? It's a story that Jesus tells, and it has a deeper spiritual meaning. So here's what we're going to do, kids. We're going to take the parable of the Good Samaritan, and we're going to put it in today's Lake Havasu terms. Okay, so imagine Jesus telling the parable of the Good Samaritan in the setting of Lake Havasu City in 2018. Okay, so here is maybe kind of how the story would go. So Jesus replies, a man was riding his bicycle up a coma. And as he was riding, some thieves came out of nowhere, jumped him, took his bike, and beat him up to the point that he was almost dead and left him there and ran away. Along came a preacher, not me, but a preacher, Along comes a preacher, and he sees the man on the side of the road, almost dead, and because he's so busy, he decides instead of stopping and helping the man, he crosses a coma to the other side and continues on to avoid the man as much as possible, okay? Then, in the same fashion, a deacon comes along, not one of Calvary's deacons, clearly, but a deacon. And he sees the man on the side of the road almost dead and does the same thing as the preacher. Because he's busy with his day, he goes across the street to avoid the man as much as possible. And then comes along the guy in town that nobody likes. He's the guy that smells funny. And he's kind of awkward in social settings. And nobody really likes having him around. And people have kind of mistreated him. They've treated, Lake Havasu residents have treated him badly. And he comes along and he sees the man on the side of the road, so he pulls over and he gets out and he leans down to help the man and he begins kind of taking care of his scratches and his wounds and his hurts. And then he takes him and he picks him up and he puts him in his car and he drives him to the nearest urgent care. And at the urgent care, he gets the guy checked in, and he looks at the guy at the front desk and says, listen, I will take care of this man's medical bills because I don't know if he has insurance. So take care of him. Here's a down payment, 
and I'll be back in a couple of hours to check on him and pay the rest of the bill. So here's the question that Jesus poses. Who did the right thing? The preacher, the deacon, or the man that nobody really likes? The man that nobody really likes because he was the one that showed kindness and compassion to the man that was injured, correct? Yeah. And so here's the thing. Let's look at what Jesus, the actual parable. So look down, Luke 10. We're on verse 30, okay? Luke 10, verse 30. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, now the Levites were the priestly tribe of Israel. They were the ones who worked in the temple and served the, served the Lord directly. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, also passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, okay, stop there, a Samaritan. Let me give you a description of what Samaritan is. The Samaritans were a people group, a minority in the land of Israel. So if you picture the land of Israel, it's like a long uh, shape, kind of a rectangular, elongated rectangle. Samaria was right in the middle of that long area. And the Samaritans lived in this one little small patch of Israel. And the rest of the Israelites looked down on the Samaritans. They didn't like them. They thought they were less than people. And it was, not, it was common knowledge, and it's actually recorded in the Bible, that if an Israelite needed to go from the south of Israel to the north, or from the north to the south, rather than going through Samaria, which was the most direct route, they would add one to two days onto their journey to go around Samaria. That's how much they did not like the Samaritans. It was also common knowledge back then that if a Jewish person, an, an Israelite, passed by a Samaritan, they would spit on the Samaritan. That's how badly the Samaritans were treated. So let's come back to the story, keeping in mind, that's who's stopping to help the man, the Israelite man who's hurting on the side of the road. Verse 33, but a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him, and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii, uh, two pretty valuable coins, and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Verse 36. Jesus is still talking. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? And the lawyer said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. Love everyone, everywhere, every time. Jesus' example is the Samaritan who had been abused by Israelites the Samaritan, the one receiving the abuse, helped his abuser. Now, we don't know from the story if that Israelite that had been injured actually had encountered and had abused that Samaritan, but that was the MO. That was the, the way the world worked in that day and time. And so for a Samaritan, a person who was downtrodden, who was abused by the Israelite people for the most part, he's the one who stopped and helped. Guys, that pretty much takes any excuse we have to not love someone, that takes that excuse away, doesn't it? And so love everyone, everywhere, every time. So it's like this. I mentioned earlier that this resolution is not so much about us that it's about others, but let's be real. It is about us, isn't it? It's about us changing our lives to look more like Christ. It's about becoming a person who sees others with understanding and compassion and acts on that compassion. You know, let's be honest. Hasn't Jesus shown each of us understanding and compassion when we needed it? Yeah. And so this is about us doing for others what Christ has already done for us. 
That's what this is about. So I've got another discussion question. Don't worry, this is the last one. So turn to your neighbors, your family, whoever you're with, or just think about it to yourself, and answer me this. What is one thing you can do in 2018 to love others? Go. Man, this is a hard one. I don't want to do this one. This one's hard. Obviously, this question is that question that applies it. This is where the rubber hits the road, right? This is where we take this big concept that Jesus has given us, and we apply it very directly to our specific lives. So let me give you some suggestions, because I think that you saying loving others better is maybe too general. I think we need to be a little more specific. Remember what I said earlier is keep it small, keep it simple. Well, what if maybe for you, loving others is about finances, Maybe for you, your resolution needs to be to spend less money on yourself and spend more money on the needy, you know, helping others, uh, helping at the food bank, giving uh, food and coats and things like that to those families who are in need that are less fortunate than yourself. Maybe that's what your resolution needs to be. Maybe you need to put money back and sponsor a child to go to church camp. I don't know what that looks like, but maybe that's what it is for you. Maybe it's very specific about being nice to a person, a specific person in your life that you have not been kind and loving to up to this point. Kids, I'm sure there's somebody in your class that you don't really like and nobody really likes, but what if you were kind to them in the name of Jesus? That would be a really good resolution, a way to love everyone, everywhere, every time. What if you decided that you would speak kind words? What if it was about your speech? Not just what you say verbally, but what you type on a computer online as well. And that's a tough one, isn't it? Not just online, but in person. There are times, for one reason or another, because of sin, we decide and we say things that really, if we thought about it, Jesus would not really like us saying those things. What if in 2018 we decided that we would consciously think that Jesus, because he is, that Jesus is standing next to us in that conversation or watching us as we're typing on social media and he was sitting there approving or disapproving what you're about to say? or what you're about to post. How would your speech, or your things that you post online, how would those change? Maybe that needs to be your resolution. The point of this is, is to think about changing to be more like Christ in 2018. It's, you can read your Bible, and I encourage you to do that, but if you don't apply what the Bible calls you to do, that reading has done you no good. You're not changed by it. And that's what Hebrews tells us, is that God's word is living and active, and it's supposed to change us from the inside out. And so the challenge this morning is this. Adults, this week and this year, resolve to treat others the way Jesus would treat them. Love everyone, everywhere, every time. And then... Resolve to talk about that with your family, with your children, with your husband, your wife. Resolve to have discussions about how to apply loving others more closely in your life. And then go and do it and hold each other to doing it so that you can partner together in walking with Christ. Will you join me in prayer?